this is To Help You Heal, and I'm your host, Marie Monville. We are going to spend 10 minutes talking about healing. What kind of healing do you need? Is it in your mindset? Is it emotional healing? Is it spiritual healing? You know, there's a lot of healing that we all need, and this is where you're going to find it every week, 10 minutes on Tuesday. I'm so glad you're spending this time with me. Welcome back. Today we are talking about resilience. And you know, we came through this whole series on relationships. And last week we talked about rebuilding trust. And I think resilience is an important part of all of that. Because if we are working to build relationships, sometimes that takes a different kind of commitment. And it takes the ability to evaluate and look at things that maybe aren't working and to decide to continue pursuing them. Because I know we talked about, especially the week that dealt with friendships, you know, sometimes our friendships aren't meant to last forever. But when we think about relationship with our spouse, relationship with our kids, our family, those are the relationships that we want to maintain a commitment to. And even some of our friendships, you know, there are going to be times where we go through maybe some rough patches with our friends. And if we want to stay committed to this in a really intentional way, then it's an opportunity to say, okay, I need to embrace some aspect of resilience here. Because resilience is going to help us keep our mindset in a place where we can continue to move forward. We can embrace that belief that there is good on the other side. And so I want to break down what I feel like resilience really is and where it comes from and what happens as we embrace these places of healing, as we partner with God, as we look to resilience as a as something that comes from more than just us. Because if I were going to look back across my life and say, you know, where do I see evidence of my ability to embrace resilience? I, I see a lot of it. You know, I see it in those hard places. I see it in the determination and, and my choice to not give up. But if it was all based on me, I'm not sure I could continue. You know, I don't know that in those hard moments, I would have had the ability to maintain some aspect of resilience to say, yes, I I am going to see this through. I'm not going to let these hardships, I'm not going to let these setbacks keep me down. I'm going to believe and walk forward into the future that God has designed for me. And that's the difference maker. You know, that's the thing for me. It's understanding that resilience does not rest on me alone, but that resilience comes from my partnership with God in knowing that I don't have to do it all, that it's not all on me, that it is all about my relationship with the Lord and allowing him into these places and believing that he is working even when I might not see it. I write about resilience in my book, To Help You Heal. You can grab that on Amazon. You can grab it on my website. And I say in there, my resilience and determination exists due to more than just my positive mental outlook, problem-solving ability, or support system. It exists because of Jesus. He never fails. When I look across the landscape of my life, yes, I see pain and suffering, but I see his faithfulness. While I wouldn't have purposefully chosen most of my circumstances, I love what God has done with them, and I authentically love my life. And for me, that's the place that I come back to whenever I'm faced with another opportunity to walk out this concept of resilience, to say, okay, I'm not going to let this current circumstance be my definition. I'm going to be a bit more objective. I'm going to look at the larger picture. I'm going to identify places in my life where God has intervened. And so if you're in a difficult situation and you're saying, yeah, my mindset's kind of stuck. I feel like I'm just expecting more of the same. I'm not really, you know, working towards some perspective on belief that there could be more in the future or there could be something really good around the corner for me. I'm not resilient right now. Then let's talk through a couple things that have helped me, and I believe that they will help you. And one is looking back across the landscape of your life to say, okay, where has God intervened? Where has he brought something good out of a place where I wouldn't have expected it? If it were up to me, I never could have done that. You know, look for those places. Spend some time, spend some quiet moments, whether for you it's a place of journaling. You know that I love to go on walks. I'm sure if you've been listening to the podcast, you've heard me talk about that. Take 
take a walk with the Lord. You know, maybe you're going to think about it when you're in the shower. We have those good ideas in the shower. And I've said it before, but let me run through it again. The reason why taking a walk or getting a shower, why that works so well for us is that when we're doing a low level activity, so something that we don't have to think about intentionally, it quiets those centers in our brain that are responsible for our emotions and our long range processing. So typically the way the brain works is that only one area can really be in control at a time. And most of the time for us, that's either the emotional center or our long range decision making center. Well, if we want to think about things objectively, for me, if I want to connect with the Lord, I know I need to quiet those two places and lean into this place of the, uh, you know, the low level activity. So I'll take a walk. And that for me opens up the ability to hear God more clearly. It's not that he's only speaking to me when I'm out on a walk, but I think it's just easier for me to hear him that way. So find a place that works for you to process these thoughts and think about, okay, where has God intervened in my life? Where has he done good things? And then just as you could believe and rely on him to do that in the past, it's making the choice to say, God, I believe that if you could do that in the past, you're going to do that in this present moment, that you are the same yesterday, today, and for forever. And I can count on you. But I also think it's important then that when we are in those places of feeling a bit worn down by our life, you know, when we are in the struggle, we need to take good care of ourselves. And some of the ways we can do that looks like having a good support system and leaning into them. Because sometimes we can get so trapped in our thoughts and we just get so discouraged and see it from one perspective that we need to talk about it with someone else. Sometimes talking about it in and of itself shifts our perspective without them saying anything at all. But also having someone to lean on that we know we're not the only one carrying this is so powerful. Just that knowing that somebody else knows and they care is important. So share it with someone. Look at it from this aspect of obstacles or opportunities. And I'll admit, I don't always love doing this. There are days when I choose not to. But if there's one thing that has really shaped my life and helped me in these moments of difficulty, it's saying, okay, I can either choose to just see this as a problem, or I can become solution focused in realizing that obstacles are opportunities and saying, God, what do you want to show me in this? What do you want me to see? What's the takeaway here? What's the bigger picture? Asking myself to shift my perspective, but also asking God to help me shift my perspective to see more than I could naturally see on my own. That helps. You know, it's this place of saying, I'm going to do what I can, but I'm going to let God do what he does. And I think, you know, the the way that I tend to process difficulties, and, and I think we've talked through this in the past, but it's one thing that I always use. It's sort of this three-step system, saying to myself, what part of this is my responsibility? What is not? And then where do I need to make a change? Because sometimes these places where we need to embrace resilience, it's actually seeing it from a different perspective, that it's not all on us. You know, that it isn't all about what we need to do, but it's it's deciphering what is my responsibility, what is not, and what do I need to change? And and that leads me to what I think is an important element of resilience and it's surrender. Because sometimes we want to fight for all the wrong things. You know, we want to fight for ourselves or fight for our family or whatever it is in a place where we're not in control, you know, where we're not the ones who are going to push this through or we can't you know, affect the outcome in the way that we desire. And so it's learning to say, all right, I'm going to surrender this situation. I am only going to engage it in the places where I'm supposed to. I'm only going to fight in the place where God has asked me to partner with him, but I'm going to trust him to do the rest. I'm going to trust that he's doing more than I can see right now, that this whole aspect of resilience, it's not all on me. I don't have to make all this stuff happen. I need to do my part. I need to keep my mindset in the right space. I need to not be looking at life from this pessimistic view, but I also need to allow God to be who he is and not fight battles that aren't mine. Because, you know, I think if we want to have the the bandwidth, you know, the mental, emotional, and physical energy to embrace resilience, then we need to lay down the things that were never ours to carry in the first place. 
Because if we're tired, you know, if we're weary, if we're not getting good sleep, if we feel like it's everything on every side, it's going to be so much harder to embrace that space of resilience. And so it's embracing surrender and asking ourselves, okay, where do I need to surrender? Where am I fighting that I'm not called to fight? Am I prioritizing my well-being? If I am in a place where I don't feel like being resilient or resilience is just hard right now, is it because I'm tired, just physically tired? Is it because I'm fighting too many things on too many sides? And if so, is that because I've taken on more than is my responsibility? I hope that this 10-minute episode has been helpful to you. I want to invite you to come back next week. We are going to talk about freedom from our fears. It's going to be a good one. If you want more on resilience, if you want more on a lot of the things I talk about, you're going to want to grab my book to help you heal. You can do that right on Amazon. You can have it in two days, or you can order it through my website and I'll get it out to you as well. I do sign all the copies that are ordered directly through me and pop them in the mail myself. So I look forward to connecting with you that way. And I can't wait to continue our conversation next week on freedom from our fear. 